Pelican 500BR is a development of the Canadian Pelican from 1984, a design by Jean-René Lepage. The 500BR version that we'll test today was developed in Brazil by Flyer Industria Aeronautica. This unit was built in 2007. The aircraft is a tricycle gear, high-wing, two-seater. It's 20 feet long, and its wingspan is 35.4 feet. The engine is the well-known and appreciated 100 horsepower Rotax 912S. You check the oil lever through an inspection door on the cowling. This unit is equipped with a three-bladed warp drive carbon fiber prop. Some Pelican 500BRs are equipped with a variable pitch propeller, which mainly improves runway performance, albeit being a bit heavier. This unit has two 14.5 gallon fuel tanks, one on each wing, for a total of 29 gallons. This is not the only fuel configuration for the 500BRs, there are at least four different fuel capacities for the model, some including an auxiliary tank behind the seats. The Pelican's rudder is big, which might explain a bit of why it's so stable in yaw. We'll go over that trait on our flight test today. The main gear leg is right behind the wing strut, so getting in and out of the cabin is not entirely easy but one can certainly adapt to that. There's a lot of room inside and the seats are slightly inclined, which makes for even more useful space. There's plenty of leg and headroom and the doors are bubble shaped, further improving cabin comfort and visibility. Doors are going like and they're kept open by a magnet, which has enough strength to keep the doors open when the engine is running. A great feature on warmer days. The Pelican Spano is... well, it's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful is quite subjective, but everyone on our Fly and Tail team has the same opinion about the Spano, so we dare to call it that. There's a professional look to the materials and the way the instruments are disposed, and the sticks give it sort of a military feel. This panel makes you want to fly just by looking at it. You fly with your left hand when seated on the left. The power lever, a vernier, is located in the middle. Pitch trim is manual through this lever. There is good space behind the seats for luggage. Tanks are drained the usual way through drain valves under the wings. There's a shut-off valve on the cabin floor, and there are no fuel selectors. Flaps are actuated through a bar between the seats, and there are four positions other than flaps up. The ailerons droop down with flap selection, like on the Airbus 320. Wow! Okay then, clear prop! The Brazilian Pelican has a composite fuseless construction and the wings and flying surfaces are metal. The nose gear is linked to the pedals, but only on the ground. They detach when the aircraft is in flight, so rudder inputs will not move the nose wheel out of center when flying. Let's check the engine.
We're ready. Let's go fly. The Pelican 500BR runway performance is closer to what you'd expect from a Cherokee 140 than what you'd get from a Rans Coyote, for example. On grass, with two on board, 18.5 gallons of fuel, and with a temperature of 75 Fahrenheit, we calculated 1,150 feet for takeoff. That's not bad, but the Pelican wouldn't win a stall contest. We used full power for climb and obtained 500 feet per minute while maintaining 80 miles per hour indicated airspeed. Leveled at 4,500 feet, we adjusted 5,100 RPMs. We saw 100 miles per hour on the IAS indicator, which with 29.99 inches of mercury and a temperature of 68 Fahrenheit at that altitude resulted in 109 miles per hour, 95 knots of true airspeed. With wide open throttle we got 112 miles per hour indicated. That was 107 knots true. Directional stability is great on the Pelican 500, as mentioned before. It flies as if it were on rails, and very little rudder is needed when turning. Control forces are harmonized and proportional, and there is a lot of authority. Stall with flaps up occurred at 50 miles per hour with no tendencies and with a gentle but definite break. We flew the circuit maintaining between 60 and 70 miles per hour. We could feel how stable the Pelican is and its powerful control authority. Here we switch on the auxiliary fuel pump and turn on the landing lights. On the flare, you have to be subtle with elevator inputs on the stick because small stick deflections cause significant elevator changes. Landing the Pelican requires a little more finesse than landing a Cessna 152, for example. Nothing much. It's something you can only notice in the first few landings before you get used to it.
The Pelican 500BR is an airplane in the full sense of the word. There's nothing flimsy or delicate about it. It's roomy, well-built, well-finished and flies very well. Our fly and tail team has several hours of cross-country flying in a Pelican and we can attest to the fact that it is a great traveling machine. And after landing you can taxi, cut off the engine and just sit there staring at that beautiful panel. Well, do that and you'll probably want to fire it back up and go fly again. Thank you for watching this Fly and Tail flight review. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and thank you very much. On our next episode, we'll bring you another aircraft, then we'll fly it and tell you all about it.